Today's presentation is uh, Breastfeeding and Postpartum Implications for Infants and Women Affected by Diabetes During Pregnancy. Our presenter, presenter today is Gita Rao. She is, uh, well, you can see the alphabet soup after her name. She was the regional dietitian for Region 4, which is the mid-coastal area, for about seven years. She is currently at uh, Palo Alto Medical Foundation. And she has been a dietitian for a long time. Gita, I'm not going to tell them how many years. Um, Here's my age. Yep. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining in. I will be, as Cynthia, uh, thank you, Cynthia, for the wonderful introduction. And as Cynthia said, I'm going to be talking about breastfeeding, uh, postpartum implications for infants and women affected by diabetes during pregnancy. So I'm going to ta touch uh, uh, into areas of medical nutrition therapy and talking about benefits of breastfeeding for the mom and the, uh, the baby and also talking about oral medications, insulin adjustment and birth control, talking a little bit about depression. So it's a lot of stuff happening. I'm sure you guys will have a lot of questions. So feel free to post that. All right, so the American Academy of Pediatrics, as you see, recommends that, say, states that human milk is species specific and all substitute feeding preparations differ markedly from it, making human milk unique and optimal and superior for infant feeding. And so the recommendation is breastfeeding should be continued for at least the final year of year and beyond for as long as mutually desired by the mother and child. And the WHO recommends infants should receive nutritionally adequate and safe complementary foods while breastfeeding continuously at least up to two years of age or beyond. So why is breastfeeding preferred? So uh, breastfeeding is recommended at least a minimum of uh, uh, three months or three plus months, preferably to a year. I know I have uh, some examples of as long as seven years, which is huh, that's a little too much, but that's good. That's a good uh, way to look at it. Uh, breastfeeding infants are tend to be more leaner, so these are all very well documented. Uh, decreases the incidence of diabetes in offspring, fewer infections like ear infections or other things in infants. And breastfeeding infants do have uh, higher IQs. So women with diabetes can successfully breastfeed with proper education planning and support. So general breastfeeding education for a woman with diabetes is uh, similar to that for a woman without diabetes. So a woman's concerns about breastfeeding should really be responded to in our sessions. And uh, any kind of a previous breastfeeding experience, social isolation, and beliefs about breastfeeding do really influence a woman's decision to breastfeed. So I would say if there's any questions about breastfeeding, and a lot of our facilities have the feeding support group, or you have a licensed lactation consultant, so refer appropriate referrals should be made as needed. And also talking to those patients ahead of time does help them feel more positive, positive about why they should be breastfeeding. So breastfeeding, how is it beneficial for mom? Uh, breastfeeding does benefit in terms of glucose and lipid metabolism in women. It does help mobilize the glucose and um, it helps with a lot of things like weight loss, postpartum, and uh, in one of the, nur nurse, the nurses' health study, uh, one year of breastfeeding showed it decreased the diabetes rate by about 15 percent in the normal population of women. And it does also help reduce or delay risk of any uh, diabetes in women in future uh, with a history of gestational diabetes. And that is one of the good points that I would focus on towards in your sessions whenever you're talking to women. Uh, about breastfeeding, I would normally talk uh, definitely the last two visits uh, about breastfeeding and talking about the benefits of breastfeeding, how it can help her, because normally this woman have a lot of concerns about, do am I going to get diabetes after I deliver? And so this is a good area where you can talk about saying, how can this help with decreasing the risk of diabetes in future? 
So continuing with what, the benefits for mom, uh, the improved glucose metabolism. So there is a non-insulin mediated use of glucose by the mammary gland to synthesize lactose. So there's a lot of glucose burnt in this process and uh, which helps you control your glucose levels. And there is also increased insulin sensitivity due to increased prolactin and decreased estradiol. Uh, it improves the beta cell function with three months of breastfeeding. So we do focus at least at three months of breastfeeding. Um, um, some of them do combo uh, formula and breastfeeding, but focusing a lot more on exclusive breastfeeding, talking about the benefits with the women with GDM uh, would really help. So breastfeeding for infants. So early breastfeeding appears to reprogram the eating centers in brain. Uh, a lot of uh, very well documented research is uh, it all what we call as fetal programming. So it depends on the maternal sugars during pregnancy. It does reprogram the eating centers in the brain for the offspring. So it does help decrease the rate of obesity and diabetes. So that is one of the biggest benefit coming from breastfeeding the infant. Uh, one of the reviews of the clinical literature concluded that our early cow's milk is exposure. So we're talking about breastfeeding versus uh, milk, cow's milk, or a formula. It could be an important determinant of subsequent type 1 diabetes in infant, and it may increase the risk about time and a half. And the other studies have also identified foods such as gluten or wheat as a trigger for type 1 diabetes. And uh, Pima Indian and the Finnish studies demonstrated just about three months of breastfeeding did reduce the lifetime incidence of type 2 diabetes by about 13 percent. So it's pretty significant. So that's one of the other bigger, uh, you know, factors to uh, educate women more on breastfeeding. And for offspring, again, the breastfeeding, like as I said, it's a repeat. Breastfeeding infants are much more leaner compared to the uh, non-breastfed infants. There is an inverse relationship between breastfeeding and uh, obesity. And uh, the formula-fed uh, infants produce more insulin, so there is hyperinsulinemia, more insulin levels in the blood, which retards the lipolysis breakdown of fat, and it helps with depositing more fats, which in, turns, which in turn increases the risk for diabetes and obesity in future. So there are a lot of studies that have shown that breastfeeding does definitely reduce the childhood risk of asthma and also atopic dermatitis in those with a positive family history. Also breastfeeding may uh, set lower satiety thresholds, reduce insulin levels, during infancy and also reduce the exposure to chemicals and nitrates that impair the beta cell function. So there's a lot of good things uh, to focus on for education so that uh, kind of gives an area for the mom to start thinking about more about breastfeeding. So I bet a lot of you have seen this slides and uh, it's widely used in a lot many uh, talks. But you look at the benefits of this breastfeeding versus the, uh, it's comparing the breast, the breast milk and the infant formula. So you see the link or the chain keeps going up for breast milk when, it com when it, you look at infant formula. So you see you get all this good stuff from the infant formula and the breast milk and you get the minerals and then you get the fatty acids but the, the, the chain keeps going up the breast milk. You have the good enzymes coming, the growth factors, the hormones, antibacterial factors, antiviral and all the good stuff. So I love the slide so when I show it to the moms like whoa that's what we get. So, uh, so coming to the fetal origins of adult uh, disease. The beta cells of the um, fetal pancreas become more responsive to glucose late in gestation uh, and the beta cell mass increases in the last trimester of pregnancy. So as you know we all talk about uh, to women the pattern of uh, insulin need during pregnancy which goes up pretty much the last two trimesters until the 37 weeks and you see a little drop after 37 weeks when actually your body, the body is getting ready to deliver 
where the placental hormones are kind of clearing, where you see your blood sugars looking a little bit better. But the last trimester is when you, you see that uh, the beta cell, the pancreas, the fetus actually, st fetus pancreas starts producing a lot more insulin and the beta cell mass starts to increase. So the theory is a high availability of glucose programs this pancreatic islet development in irreversibly influ influencing the metabolic response to glucose later in life and predisposing to certain patterns of adult disease like diabetes or obesity. So the third trimester, like I said, the body's need for insulin increases significantly. So it becomes more important based on this theory to educate women on tighter glucose control, especially during the last trimester. I know it's a lot of work in the last trimester. Women are kind of getting tired, but that's when you really want to focus on a tighter glucose control. Now the risks of uh, breastfeeding for infants, of not breastfeeding for infants and mothers. So you can see the left-hand side, the infant, and the right-hand side, the mother. So there's a lot of risk factors, for example, for infants, diarrhea, gastroenteritis, enterocolitis, and SIDS, asthma, pneumonia, ear infections, and one of the biggies being childhood obesity and type 2 diabetes, childhood leukemia, and for the mother, um, one of the biggest thing is a retention of gestational weight gain. So I know a lot of mom want to definitely, desperately try to lose that weight after they give birth. Uh, so that's one of the strongest points where you say, okay, uh, these are the risk factors. And one of the other things we see is postpartum depression. Although we now see it's antepartum depression is also greater compared to what we see postpartum depression. But um, that does help. Uh, breastfeeding to take to decrease the risk of postpartum depression. And you see the metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, perimenopausal breast cancer, ovarian cancer. So these are all the risk factors you could see could uh, go up with not breastfeeding. 